a warm welcome back attendees our next speaker is a real bistock server veteran however nowadays he is not just focusing on bistock he always also leaves his footprint in asia not letting go on his roots stephen session today shows how asia and bistock server 2020 or better together by connecting cloud connectors to bistock server over to stephen Hello, and thank you for the introduction. Um, I'm Stephen Thomas, and uh, like she said, I'm talking about Azure and BizTalk 2020, Better Together. So let's jump in. I'll tell you a little bit more about me in case you haven't seen any of my past uh, sessions that I've presented about. I've been doing consulting work for over 20 years now. Uh, most of that work uh, has been in BizTalk Server. Started working with BizTalk uh, 2000 back in 2001 when it first came out. I've been working with Azure and Logic Apps for over five years now, so I've got a lot out of the video yesterday of going through the history of Logic Apps and go back and remember all those days of of how things used to be and how how great we have things to get today. So it's nice to see that progression. I'm a 16 year Microsoft MVP. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, you can email me anytime. It's Stephen at stephenwthomas.com, or you can reach out to me on Twitter at stephenwthomas. Uh, with that, I'd like to open up to let's talk uh, Logic Apps. So, if any time anybody has any questions about Logic Apps, uh, wants to reach out to me, I'm even welcome to set up a phone call with you to discuss um, your integration uh, challenges and how uh, Logic Apps can work with BizTalk or without BizTalk in your environment. Uh, please reach out to me. I would love to do that. I'd love to uh, to talk with you more. Uh, for anybody who doesn't want to talk to me anymore, I definitely understand that. Um, I do have some other resources that you can leverage to help learn uh, learn more about Logic Apps. Um, I have a bunch of courses on Pluralsight. Uh, we have two that are part of the Azure Developer uh, Track. So I have one covering creating enterprise Logic Apps, and then one more that's message centric around enterprise messaging and eventing. Um, these courses were both updated about a year ago. I also have two slightly older courses on getting started in fundamentals of Logic Apps. Uh, pretty much all those concepts and even those older courses are still going to be relevant today. Uh, for anybody who wants to refresh on BizTalk or who just can't get enough of hearing my great voice, uh, there's some BizTalk courses out there as well um, that you can uh, review. Uh, so with that, let's take a quick look at how this session is going to be laid out today. Uh, first off, I'm going to talk about the why. So why would we want to use uh, Azure and BizTalk together um, in our integration environment? Uh, then I'm going to cover the how, so what uh, tools are available to make this happen. And then I'm going to cover any roadblocks that we might have in our way to help us build uh, some of our first cloud-based uh, solutions. Uh, so with that said, I did actually create a poll um, that should be live now. So anybody uh, during the course of the session can jump in and take a look at that poll. I want to gauge some interest of you know, how many clients are using BizTalk and Azure together today. Uh, do you have plans to do it in the future? Are you happy with the BizTalk only environment? Um, so I just like to generate some uh, some feedback around that. So um, that poll is open um, uh, when you have time. Uh, so with that, I'm going to actually jump into phase zero, a bonus phase of the session. Uh, while most of the session is going to be focused on enterprise use of Logic Apps, um, I've actually found a use uh, in the home, kind of outside of the enterprise. So it might be very surprising to most. I actually don't have a personal edition of BizTalk Server running in my house. Um, definitely thought about setting one up just to try to, you know, workflow some uh, bill paying and stuff like that. Um, but there's no BizTalk Server here. Uh, but I am leveraging Logic Apps uh, right here uh, in our house. So what I'm going to talk about is Logic Apps in action, and hopefully it can help uh, spur your mind of things you can do both in the enterprise and outside as well. Um, so a couple of years ago, these uh, Wi-Fi buttons were the big uh, rave. Everyone you know, press it and then you know call Logic App. Um, so I've I've built out a solution using that concept. So my son has a lot of physical issues. Uh, he's 10 years old. Um, he also has a lot of surgeries, which means there's a lot of time he's going to be in his bed, and we're not always there. We're at home 24/7, but not always right there by his side. And sometimes he needs things. And he also has this tendency to wake up at like three o'clock in the morning, and we really have no idea because we're sleeping. 
So I created these simple little buttons. We have a, a green button and a red button. Green button, when he wakes up, he hits the green button, tells us what time he woke up in the morning. Red button is similar to the I've fallen and can't get up button, it's kind of a panic alert. So he presses the red button and we're going to get alerted instantly. And then we have a button that he can clip to his PJs and have it right there with him uh, if he needs something while he's in bed and can't get out. Uh, and this is him laying in bed with the button right there and he can click it and we'll, we'll come if we need something. So these are HTTP triggers that call out to a logic app. And using the logic app, we have various different types of notifications we can do. Um, I chose logic apps because I could build out a complete workflow. If I don't get a notification back from like a text message, I can escalate, make a phone call, make sure that we're up and somebody is attending to them. Um, the two types of notifications we primarily send now is an email notification. So this is from two, uh, two days ago when he woke up at 4.25 a.m. So it also logs the SQL server so we can you know, track over time because everybody likes to do that, right? And to see what time he woke up in the morning and if it makes him cranky that day or, or whatnot. And then if we do uh, press one of the other buttons, we do get a text alert and you can see you know, he's done this in the past. It tends to be four or five in the morning and it'll send out uh, these alerts and needs help. So, so this is just one way that we're leveraging Logic Apps uh, here at home. There's other technologies outside of Logic Apps that Microsoft has. Uh, kind of on the office side that does similar things. Um, I built these solutions a while ago um, and chose Logic Apps to help, um, help me learn um, how, to, how to build these Logic App solutions a little bit better. So with that, I'm going to jump into our phase one. Now we're jumping into the enterprise use uh, of how we can leverage uh, Logic Apps. And why in the first place would we want a BizTalk and Azure-based solution to begin with? So first off, Demand in general is, is higher than I've ever seen for overall integration on the Microsoft stack. Uh, Sandro kind of mentioned this yesterday that he's been doing a lot of new BizTalk server installations. Well, I've seen and talked with many BizTalk clients that are either leveraging Azure today or thinking about doing it very soon. So they want to build out their existing integration environment and, and do more with it. Uh, with that, I've seen a huge jump in the role of an Azure integration architect and even uh, projects coming through that are pure logic gap related projects where they're just looking for a logic gap specialist. Um, these type of projects have been BizTalk migrations, um, not a lot of lift and shift type of stuff. It's more we want to take our solution and make it better and leverage uh, Azure integration components. So it's kind of a, a rebuild, uh, replatforming type, type of approach. Um, and I have seen a lot of net new projects that are leveraging just Azure integration technologies, uh, which is pretty exciting. And the, the past years, I haven't seen such a huge demand for that. And something that, you know, not surprising to all of us, I'm sure, as, as most of us are hardcore BizTalk people, um, I've seen a tremendous jump in the demand for BizTalk projects. Um, and this isn't um, the slower paced um, admin type role. This is brand new BizTalk development that's going to be on, on site in the local data center. And I see that a lot of clients um, have BizTalk running and maybe their BizTalk development expertise has moved on in another role or another, another client and they don't have that in-house skills to build these projects. So I'm seeing a big demand uh, recently and that need to build out these BizTalk resources. So leveraging BizTalk um, is a very nice, easy way to have kind of your stepping stones into an Azure integration space. Um, you know, most of us are familiar with BizTalk, have it running now, and will facilitate moving into a cloud-based infrastructure very, very easily. Um, in doing so, they've made it extremely easy to work with BizTalk and Azure. When we go into the how part, you'll see the adapters are very streamlined and make it very straightforward. So they've really lowered the bar in terms of getting started with your first cloud-based solution. Um, they also allow you to move at your own pace. So unlike a in-place BizTalk server upgrade, for example, which is an all or nothing, you can move small pieces of code as you see fit and build out a, a different type of cloud-based hybrid solution. Um, you can migrate small pieces of existing uh, uh, integration components and do maybe older interfaces that need to be updated anyways um, and make sure that those can be, be leveraged in, in the cloud. And of course, when it comes to new development, um, and everyone should be looking today at new development that they're doing 
and their on-prem data center and say, does it make sense to plan for the future? Think five, 10 years down the road. Are we going to want this to be a cloud hosted, a cloud-based solution? Um, sometimes the answer will be no, um, but there's a lot of times where now maybe it's the right time to really jump in and do that new development uh, in a hybrid or pure cloud-based uh, scenario. Uh, leveraging BizTalk and Azure together, we actually have increased security. And on top of that, we have more options in terms of ways we're going to communicate with outside trading partners. So right now, a lot of us have text-based config files. I know I have config files that have passwords, usernames and passwords all over the place. Uh, we may have unsecured FTP endpoints. Uh, we may be leveraging file drops, and probably everybody has some sort of reverse proxy set up um, in their environment. Um, these kind of things can be replaced with, with things in Azure, such as the password vault to secure, secure our secrets. Uh, we have service bus queues to help facilitate uh, reliable communication, and then API management that can be used to help uh, secure and control our external endpoints. And these are all things that are available today. Uh, the other thing that's available to us is brand new net new scenarios. Uh, things that we could never do with just our BizTalk environment uh, by itself. Um, most notably is the access to all the new API connectors um, that Logic Apps uh, brings to the table. Uh, we also have a more uh, streamlined approach to process non-traditional messages. Um, that is messages that are images and videos. Uh, more and more I see the need for this at an enterprise level. Um, a message nowadays just is it XML or EDI. It goes way beyond that into you know, images and video analysis. Um, in addition to um, being able to send these, these large data files into the cloud, uh, there's a large suite of image and video processing tools through cognitive services that makes it really nice for doing brand recognition and uh, image analysis uh, in the cloud. So some of the scenarios where I see clients looking for new connectors um, here are some of the, the most popular ones that I've seen uh, clients use. Um, these are the ones you would kind of use as you're trying to sell a cloud-based uh, hybrid approach uh, at your existing uh, client uh, or company. Uh, so these are some of the more popular connectors. We have all our social media uh, connectors, such as Twitter and Facebook. Um, I, for one, years ago, thought these were kind of silly connectors and, you know, how does this really fit in the enterprise? But really brand awareness and, and brand um, value is huge. And being able to monitor Twitter, Facebook, and other social media feeds automatically with these connectors is extremely valuable. Uh, you combine that with cognitive services, you get a good idea of sentiment analysis, analysis of what people are saying. You can even go as far as uh, analyzing videos, looking for logos and, and brand analysis of those images. Um, and we'll even do facial detection to say, OK, are they showing me a Coke bottle and they're happy and, and that kind of thing. So there's a lot of, a lot of need around uh, the social media monitoring as it relates to brand awareness. Um, I also see the way we communicate with customers changing. Uh, a lot of legacy uh, in-house systems don't necessarily support, you know, sending out surveys, uh, email lists with MailChimp, uh, text message notification, especially if you want to get responses back. Um, so there's a lot of built-in connectors uh, out there to help facilitate all of that communication. Uh, there's also cross-team communication. So we may need to talk with others in our enterprise. Not everybody in every location might be using the same communication uh, protocol. Uh, so we have connectors to help facilitate that. And of course, we have all our web-centric connections. So these are all the kind of cloud-born, uh, cloud-running uh, applications that now we take, uh, we use every day, you know, like DocuSign, Salesforce, ServiceNow. Um, these are all built-in API connectors that are just there for us to leverage uh, with our logic apps. And extending BizTalk into that environment, now BizTalk and our backend systems are easily able to integrate with these systems. Okay, so phase one covered the uh, why we would want to uh, leverage uh, BizTalk in Azure. So now let's look about the how, how we would go about doing this. So Microsoft has uh, built in a lot of cool features into BizTalk 2020. Uh, we have a total of four adapters that are considered uh, cloud-based uh, Azure focused adapters. Uh, we have an adapter for Event Hub. We have an adapter for Service Bus. We have one for Blob Storage and we have one for Logic Apps. 
So I'm going to take a quick look at each of these, and then we're going to jump into a demo and see kind of some of these in action. And this is really just to give you a first idea of how you could kind of leverage these adapters and maybe think of some scenarios that you could use um, at your company to help um, facilitate uh, a migration to the cloud. So with that, I'm going to check our poll real quick. See if how the results are coming. Okay, so it looks like about 43% now say they currently use uh, BizTalk and Azure together, which is great. And 33% uh, are saying that they're thinking about using uh, BizTalk and Azure together. So for that 33%, about a third of you, um, hoping that you can really hone in onto this how uh, portion and help see how you can build out some scenarios. So uh, before we start, there's a few things I uh, want to point out, kind of gotchas, uh, if you would think of it that way. Um, you can connect your, your Azure subscription right through the BizTalk server admin, and a lot of times it'll auto-populate a lot of the details for you. Um, this seems to only be supported by work and school accounts. So if you use a personal account, and if you know what I mean when you log into Microsoft, it'll say work or school, and it'll say personal. Uh, the personal accounts don't seem to work for that. Um, so I'm one of those people that do everything under my Hotmail. So this was definitely a hindrance. Um, I actually had to create a whole new subscription under a different email. Um, but you can always enter the data manually, but just for the auto population, uh, it needs to be work or school. And if there's one takeaway from this whole session, I want everybody to remember this right here. If you're working with the Logic App Adapter and you run into an error and it says your server certificate is not properly configured, about HTTP.SYS and the HTTP case, Sandro can help. Uh, Sandro's number one resource for all BizTalk issues and how to resolve them. Um, this actually is a TLS issue, and Sandro did a blog post on how to fix it via the registry settings. So February 9th of 2020, so 2 9 of 2020, if you run into this error, you can go there and I'll help you fix it. Okay. So let's take a look at our Event Hub adapter. Um, this is used for receiving event details from uh, our Azure infrastructure. So we can, if we have an existing Azure infrastructure running, we're writing capturing events to Event Hub, BizTalk can pull down those files in a timely manner and uh, evaluate them locally um, as needed. And we can also send uh, streaming events like tracking data into our uh, Azure Event Hub. Uh, the Event Hub does support the auto-populating, so you could click on your Azure account, and it's going to populate all the information for you, including your name and security key, so it's very straightforward. Um, this is on the receive sign. Uh, on the send side, it's very similar. You can auto-populate that as well, and you have the ability to define your partition key. We talked, um, heard yesterday that you can have multiple partitions, and this would tell you where you want your BizTalk event messages to go to. So of, of the four uh, Azure-based adapters, Event Hub is the one I use the least. Um, I just really haven't had clients um, jump into the Event Hub uh, use cases yet. Um, but the, uh, it is out there, and we can leverage it uh, as we need it. Uh, one of the most important adapters and kind of one of the first steps, I would say Service Bus or Logic Apps would be a good first step. Um, Service Bus Adapter um, has been around for a while and, and is amazing to use for BizTalk and, and Azure integration. Uh, Service Bus Adapter is great for queue style, smaller messages. Um, I don't know how many of us have been around, you know, 15, 20 years. I, I could count on my both hands how many times we were begging for a queuing environment. Uh, to have access to. Um, back in the day, it was either no queue or IBM MQ for hundreds of you know, thousands of dollars. Uh, Service Bus uh, fills that gap and allows you to quickly throw up uh, queues both in the cloud or for your on-premise data that was then queued up in the cloud because it has such a nice uh, queuing infrastructure. Uh, the one thing to take away is that the Service Bus queues are not first in or first out by default. Um, there is additional work you have to do on both the sending and receiving end uh, or the queue messages to make these a, a first in, first out uh, queue. Um, and in my uh, fundamentals course inside of uh, uh, the Plural site, I go into how to set that up um, if anyone's interested. Uh, it has full support for topics and sessions um, inside this uh, service bus adapter. Uh, it also allows you to maintain metadata on both the sending and receiving of messages. So uh, BizTalk, as we know, has two messages, uh, the context and the body itself. 
Um, the service bus kind of has a similar concept where you have the body and then you have a bunch of metadata associated. Um, I personally, from a message processing perspective, uh, the metadata tends to be more important. Um, so you know, this allows you to maintain that metadata coming back and forth from the cloud and, and back to your on-premise uh, data center. Um, there's also full support for service bus premium. Okay, so let's take a quick look of how we would set up a receive location uh, for receiving messages from a queue. Um, once we set up our namespace and our queue inside the portal, we simply set up here our, our URL to access that queue. And it's quite simply the namespace slash the queue name. And if you're using a topic, it would be the topic name. So you would just put that in here. Um, you have the ability to say you're going to use sessions here, which is how we'd help uh, facilitate order delivery. And the authentication to this is via the SAS uh, tokens, which is set up uh, under the authentication tab. So it's pretty straightforward um, how you can go about uh, configuring this uh, to receive messages. Then you just turn on your receive location and it's going to start pulling down uh, some of your messages. Uh, the send port is equally as uh, straightforward. Uh, authentication and general tabs are same. Um, here we have the properties um, that uh, we can set as we send this data into our queue. So if we, wanted, if we do want to send that extra metadata, we do want to promote essentially some of these properties from our BizTalk message into the metadata of the queue message, um, we would simply define our namespace here in that uh, namespace for brokered message properties. So if we're using a custom namespace, we would simply put that fully qualified namespace there, and it's going to promote any properties uh, that we have into the, the metadata of the service bus message. Um, I, I feel the integration with the metadata is, is kind of one of the, the best and most um, advanced features of service bus. And we see the same thing in blob storage um, really um, keeps, keeps us uh, of the BizTalk centric uh, message processing state of mind. So I think that's useful. Um, next we have the blob storage. Uh, blob storage is very useful for uh, large payloads like images and videos, uh, actually allows us to um, upload them uh, into a blob storage account. Uh, there's a lot of features and flexibility with our blob storage accounts. Um, if we want to override properties, so we want to change the name of the uh, file that we're sending out, um, there's a namespace inside of BizTalk called Azure Blob Storage, a uh, whole host of properties. Uh, we can set these dynamically uh, at runtime, just like we would um, other BizTalk properties. And as I mentioned, there's full metadata support on communication back and forth. Uh, setting up, sending, receive, very similar like we've seen before. You can auto-populate it with your Azure account. Um, here you can see under the advanced tab, there is a setting called polling interval. So this is going to be a polling based type of adapter where you can configure this as needed, set it lower if you'd have uh, you know, much less meshes throughput uh, on the receive side, uh, can, uh, can adjust other settings here as needed. Uh, send side, very similar. Um, here you have the ability to set that blob name. Uh, this will define it as a static name. Um, like I said, you can't override that uh, via some properties. Okay, now we get into what I think is the funnest uh, of the four adapters is the Logic Apps adapter. So why would we look at using BizTalk and Logic Apps adapter? Well, it gives us access to the hundreds of connectors that the Logic App team has built out. So uh, any of these connectors, we could go out and build ourselves. They're, you know, build an API and build an internal web service to access these. But it's nice to have somebody else do that. And it needs to be even better to have somebody else support that. So from an access of a connector perspective, being able to take advantage of everything Logic Apps has to offer is a huge incentive. So my BizTalk environment doesn't need to know how to connect to DocuSign. I would just call a Logic App, pass in the message, and the Logic App would take care of that for me. Uh, it also gives you the ability to offload complex or intensive logic uh, to your Azure workflow. So if you had a big looping message, you had a lot of uh, complex mapping, you had other complex workflows, um, that kind of logic could then be uh, migrated into a logic app that might be easier to support and maintain. Uh, we also have workflows and logic apps that use the web editor or local development which I feel kind of lowers the barrier of entry in terms of being able to uh, support and build out these logic apps. So getting started with a BizTalk workflow, a BizTalk orchestration, it's gonna take you a day just to set up your local environment. 
um, a, a new developer could jump right into the web editor and start looking at and leveraging logic gaps. So it uh, streamlines that development process. Um, and now we can run our workflows locally. So now we have more choices and even more options that we had even before uh, you know, we started this conference. So that's, that's a huge plus. Uh, so logic gaps and a receive side, there is a receive location um, that can be leveraged. It uses IIS. Um, this is not something that I've set up in the past. Um, so I won't go into too much detail on this. I personally coming back in from a logic gap would use a service bus queue. Uh, it just seems a lot more reliable to me. Um, then I don't have to expose anything, uh, but there is the option to have a receive side on a logic app. Um, most of the work I think that everyone will be doing is on the send side. Um, so as we've seen in other demos, you create an HTTP request inside your logic app. Then you can simply uh, log into your Azure account and connect to that logic app and it'll pre-populate all the data, uh, information here. You would have multiple logic apps you could select from your drop-down list. And if there were multiple triggers, you could select them here. Um, that callback URL, it's nothing, uh, nothing exciting. It's the same callback URL that's copy and pasted out of the designer. So if you were making a call in Postman, it'd be this exact same URL that you would paste here. So BizTalk could be like a, you know, a better Postman. Well, we could argue better, better all day. But, um, so you could use that uh, for testing logic apps as well. Um, so we have all that uh, support here. Okay, so let's jump into a demo. Let's take a look at a few of these uh, logic apps in action. Okay, so I've jumped into my BizTalk environment. So this is running a virtual machine uh, in Azure. And what we're gonna talk, take a look at is kind of how we facilitate sending some of these messages. These are by no means uh, complex demos. You're just simply to give you ideas and see how uh, messages can, uh, can flow uh, back and forth. Uh, so we have a receive location here for a service bus. Um, simply came in here, entered the namespace and queue, set our authorization. And then we're going to be able to receive our, our data from that service bus queue. Um, I put uh, default uh, message broker properties here to grab some of that data uh, from the service bus queue. Uh, once I receive this message, simply go into a suspend port or send port that's going to suspend it so we can take a look at some of these properties here. So let's jump on over to this queue. I'm going to look at my queue here, and I'm just going to use Service Bus Explorer to send a message into that queue and take a look at what it's going to look like. So this is a test message. And here's what I want to point out. So you could do some processing of like receiving an order message um, via a logic app, and you could look at order value, calculate the value of that order. And now when I send this to my local environment, uh, to my data center at home, I want to I want to process high value orders faster than low value orders. So I could create a custom property, set that order value in here, set this to 5,000, and go ahead and set, send this into the queue. This talk right away is going to pick it up. We're going to see our new message here from 903 or 909. And go to messages. And what I want to point out here is that that metadata that we put in the queue is now going to be translated into context properties that we can leverage in BizDoc. Uh, now we do have a, the ability to get these promoted, and then, then we'd be able to use them for routing. So you have this nice, easy ability to, number one, receive your service bus messages with, with almost no work, and number two, be able to maintain that metadata uh, across calls, uh, across that boundary. So let's go ahead and take a look at sending data to a blob storage. So I have a simple send port that's going to an Azure blob storage account. Uh, very similar as we saw before. This time I actually did sign in and it'll allow me to auto populate my information. If I had multiple subscriptions, I could set that up here. It's going to auto populate everything in this uh, window for me. If I had multiple containers, I could select them here. Um, let's just give it a name. Demo five, and here's our namespace for blob metadata, just like we saw before. So anything in the message that has this namespace is gonna be sent as a metadata um, on this blob and, and written to Azure that way. Uh, go ahead and click okay. Let's go ahead and send our video. If anybody saw my session last year, this is the video of the pizza catching fire in my microwave oven. And that will get sent out shortly. Go back to my dashboard. 
take a look at storage accounts and go to containers. Uh, I'll put data. So I have a couple different messages here. My first demo one here is one I sent in earlier. Um, could download this um, acquire lease. It's kind of hard to see over there. Acquire lease, uh, download the message, can store multiple uh, versions of this message, even undelete them if I do delete it. Uh, the key thing here is there's no metadata. So in this one I sent it's without any promoted property. So this is just going to be a blob and uh, external application is not going to know much about that. Um, but if I look at my demo five, uh, going to look very similar, but you see here we have uh, BizTalk centric um, metadata. And that was again, driven by that property schema that was used to uh, promote this data in here. So we have uh, that information there. And now I'm going to show you how to call a logic app real quick. Go to send ports, and this is our logic app. Uh, simply uh, configured this uh, like we saw in the screenshot, set my callback URL, and now it's going to call into this logic app. Uh, kind of a trivial logic app. We'll show you how easy it is. Um, we have a good and bad sentiment message. Make sure those paste in. Jump back to our logic app here. And this was just a simple logic app, came in here, set up an HTTP request, um, making a call to sentiment analysis to determine um, what's, what's uh, the positive or negative comments. Uh, so I come to overview and those messages were called, I actually dropped them twice. And it's quite simple to come in here and say, okay, I did not like the pizza because it was cold. And it's determining it uh, 0.49 for negative sentiment. Uh, if I look at one of these others, um, I love the pizza today, and this is 100% positive. Um, so this gives you a quick idea of how easy it is from BizTalk to call your logic apps. Um, and like I said before, if I wanted to get this sentiment back into our data center, I'd probably use a service bus queue uh, to send that data back. So these were some quick trivial examples just to give you an idea and hope everyone can see for the maybe some people for the first time um, how we can do this message interaction. So with that, I am going to jump back to the slides. OK, uh, now we're to our final phase, phase three. We're going to talk about some roadblocks. So these are things I see a lot of my clients run into uh, when they start to uh, mention, hey, let's use BizTalk, let's use Azure, let's, uh, let's broaden our, our integration uh, uh, environment. So uh, first off is we already have BizTalk, and we spent a lot of money on this BizTalk environment. Um, this is the number one uh, pushback point I, I hear. Um, the good thing is, or I guess good thing for if you're looking to do Azure development is you know, biz, every BizTalk environment, every release has a life cycle of support. So as you start reaching the end of the life cycle, you need to look at, well, am I going to upgrade my BizTalk environment, which generally has a cost and maybe even a hardware cost to get new servers? Or is it time to migrate into something else that may have a different cost structure. So most people still buy yearly support with BizTalk Server. So instead of support, now you'd be transitioning into like a monthly Azure cost. So cost could definitely be a barrier, but I've seen very complex logic app solutions run at a fee of $30 a month, which uh, you, know, you can't even touch anything BizTalk uh, for that. Uh, another common pain point is data is too sensitive. Um, this is definitely true in some scenarios. I, I wouldn't look at using uh, sending credit card data uh, to your uh, Azure environment as my first uh, test, uh, uh, test scenario. Um, I would look at using logic apps for a less sensitive workload um, until everybody gets comfortable, familiar with, uh, with Azure integration. Um, what I feel like it really comes down to, do you trust your security team or do you trust Microsoft's security team? Um, when we leverage Azure integration components, you know, Microsoft has put a tremendous amount of uh, time and energy into ensuring that there's security uh, built in all over the place. Now, it is up to us to ensure we know how to configure that security correctly, which that's definitely a challenge. Um, but in terms of, you know, having another team there to support it from a security perspective, that's very helpful as well. Uh, another pushback point I hear is that uh, Azure changes frequently. I mean, look at logic apps over the past five years, where we came and even where we're going to go in the future. Um, I tend to think of this as a great thing. Uh, it gives us more ability uh, to do more uh, down the road. Um, I like having new features. So we get new features. Now we can run logic apps locally. Uh, a lot of times these new features really don't come in at additional costs. There's kind of 
you know, built into the legacy components we're having, or the costing model will change, just be a little different. But I, I definitely don't feel like there's a big hit. It's not like we're paying thousands and thousands of dollars for these, these new features. Um, and all in all, I feel things are being made easier, you know, every day. I mean, look at the beautiful uh, new designers that we have uh, for building our, our standard uh, logic apps. And, and it's just, it's all designed to make our development experience easier and better. Um, but something else I like to make sure clients kind of focus on is a, a just-in-time architecture, right? So if I look back at some of my first Logic App solutions, well, I would build it very differently today because of the uh, amount of new features and, that I have available. Um, but does it make sense to go back and refactor those Logic Apps? Well, probably not. Um, if there was a problem, something wrong with them, they needed an update anyways. Yeah, that would make sense. Um, so I try to tell people to just focus on just-in-time. Build with what we have available to us today. Um, and then help make those uh, those decisions today and not worry about what will happen tomorrow. Um, I also hear a lot of uh, feedback that the learning curve for uh, Azure integration is high. Um, and, and I'm very confident that if you've worked with BizTalk in the past, all the Azure integration components, or most of them, are going to make total sense to you. Uh, queues, logic gaps, uh, API management, storage, uh, it just all clicks uh, uh, for most of us. Um, something else you can point out to, to management is Azure integration is so easy. We don't need to hire outside consultants like Steven anymore. Um, I like this statement better. So you almost don't need to hire them. Um, it, it is, I, I feel the barrier of entry, the bar has been lowered uh, with the Azure integration pieces. Um, that said, you do need skilled resources that know some of the inner outs of the configuration. Um, but if we think back to our first BizTalk project, installing our first BizTalk environment, um, I'm pretty sure we all agree that things are a lot better now. And then using BizTalk and Azure together, we can help facilitate that move and help make everything better together. Uh, so with that, I'm almost out of time. Uh, so I'll probably jump over to the Q&A manager online and answer any questions people have. Um, I'll see if I can, hopefully that polling can be made uh, public. If not, I'll, I'll paste it somewhere. And don't forget, let's talk logic apps. Uh, I'm here, I wanna talk, uh, shoot me an email. We can set up a time on the phone. Um, uh, uh, logic apps or anything Azure integration, uh, help you to talk through uh, uh, what you can do to make, uh, make things better. Thank you. Hey, uh, Stephen. Yeah, there we are. And that's uh, let's see. There are a number of questions, right? In the in the pane. Did you did you find them? Um, let's see here. Should we help you with the question, Stephen? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I put them on a screen, but they're <laughs> it's tiny and I can't read it. <laughs> That's what happens when you get old. 20 years of integration, 20 years of biz talk mapping will do that to you. <laughs> <laughs> no issues. Uh, Lex, should I read it out for Stephen? Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, sure. yeah. yeah, yeah. That's great. So first question is from Manish. Uh, he says, hi, Steve. One of the challenge we are facing in moving existing BizTalk applications to Azure is the lack of any tools in Azure, which can do very complex mapping with BizTalk provides, which BizTalk provides. How do we go about it? Yeah, so I believe, I, I thought I read a blog post that they there used to be a toolkit for mapping for what was it azure services is that what it was called back in the day biz talk services that were in azure um there was a toolkit for that and i thought i'd read that that toolkit had been upgraded to support vs 2019. um mm -hmm. if not you know i've always pulled down the developer edition of biz talk and actually done all my mappings in the biz talk environment um, and then exported them as xslt um, there's a couple functoids that don't work like the database connector uh, but now they have full support for calling, you know, external assemblies. Um, so I, I would look at, at at that toolkit for VS 2019. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, I think that was updated. Um, otherwise, I just use the BizTalk Developer Edition. So. That's wonderful. 14 of our attendees would have been benefited by this response. <laughs> <laughs> so Hopefully about... it was a good response. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. So what about the demand on moving BizTalk solutions to other cloud providers or the preferred provider is still Azure? Um, so that's, I've never, so first off, my profile is hardcore Microsoft, right? <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not getting calls for, well, I mean, I so shockingly am for like 
uh, Amazon cloud stuff, but uh, clients that I talk to are, are going to be a Microsoft focus shop. Um, mm. Most of them, 90% have BizTalk server running. Um, I haven't had a single one. So it's, it's hard enough for me to introduce them to, to Microsoft's cloud um, for most of them, I would say. Uh, so I haven't had any of my clients interested in anything beyond a Microsoft cloud. I feel so maybe some larger clients that are, I would say, more technically savvy. Um, I'm sure that's a demand. Um, and I feel the Logic Apps Anywhere is going to help with that, that scenario. But I personally haven't seen, seen any demand for that. So we so, can I mean, assure... I, I'm not sure there's a good competitor to Logic Apps on the Microsoft or a, mm -hmm. uh, Amazon space. Um, I've not looked recently, but I, I, I think they got a couple legs up on them. I agree. So, but within Azure, it's going to be smooth, but we are, cannot comment on other service providers. Correct. Yeah. So Jasper has a question. I would create proper automated tests for your maps that make sure they keep working as expected. So it's in response to Manish. We still use the stock dev machines to create new complex maps. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's, I've always been happy with the BizTalk mapper, but I really don't know anything different. Um, I've tried to use some uh, XML spy or something before, and I was just too used to, to BizTalk mapping. Um, so I, I, I feel that's a good approach. But as you think more, Logic Apps is not as centric to mapping as BizTalk was. Logic Apps is more about connectivity. Mapping can be done, obviously, but um, it's definitely not as easy. So Balakumaran has a question. Is it possible to send SMS through Logic Apps? Yes. Yeah, I use uh, Twilio for that. Uh, mm. Twilio facilitates all of that SMS communication. There is an additional cost, but like every nine months, I have to go in and plop 20 bucks on my account. Um, they give you a virtual phone number, and that's in the, the phase zero where I receive the text messages when my son hits the red, uh, essentially panic button. Um, that's all done through Twilio, <laughs> um, and it, it works really well. Amazing. I love the Twilio stuff. That works great with Logic Apps. Yes. Uh, Vivek has a question. Have you converted or started converting home automation Logic Apps to Logic Apps standard so that your solution mm. can work offline? I'm thinking Logic Apps standard on PI running Docker. I have not, but the main reason I started building these at home uh, logic apps was to, you know, get experience with building logic apps. Um, that'll definitely be one of the first things that I, that I look at. Um, I want to make sure all the connectors that I use are, are supported. Um, and, and if not, you know, you can build your own custom connectors. So um, that's definitely on my personal roadmap. Um, so when I have time, that's something I'll look at. Hopefully next year, maybe I'll have a follow-up. I do hmm. have other plans to uh, start doing image analysis instead of relying on a button press when he wakes up, you know, camera to watch the door kind of deal. And so it's all stuff I want to build out in, 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 in the Azure integration space. That's interesting. Yeah. So Peter uh, asks, can Bistock Logic App ad adapter still work with a single tenant Logic App standard? Logic Apps hosted locally or containers and Azure Orc enabled Logic Apps. Yeah, so I haven't tried it myself. I've heard others comment that the auto populate obviously doesn't work. You can't auto, uh, you can't sign into an account and find your endpoints. But if you expose an HTTP endpoint on your uh, local environment, um, I've been told you can just paste in that URL and call that in a local environment. Um, I haven't tried it myself, but I believe that's possible. Cool. So if not, I'm sure that's coming soon. Like I said, I, I'm 90% sure that that's going to work today. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, how can you increase security measures by using Azure and Bistock? So Azure gives you what I feel is a lot more control over I guess I feel it gives you a lot more control because it gives me a lot more control and less relying on a different team to configure firewall rules and ports, um, which could be, I guess, a plus or a minus. Um, like with the Azure API uh, management stuff, I can log in and, and set controls myself. Um, we saw yesterday about using uh, Azure Front Door. Um, and those are all things that us as developers kind of tend to have access to. Maybe we should, maybe we shouldn't. Um, so I feel by restricting communication just from BizTalk to our logic apps and then using the tools in the uh, rest of uh, Azure to expose those endpoints, I feel we can build an overall more consistent and secure solution. Um, 
whether that's true or not, not sure. Um, I test, I personally sleep better at night with that type of scenario. Um, and again, it's, it's really more about a control thing because it's more of control from a developer perspective and less of a control on a third party team who always seems to kind of be disgruntled anyways. No, no offense to the third party teams that are disgruntled. That's true. Manish has uh, multiple questions on lifetime of Bistock and does Bistock have a future? Oh, such a great question. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I've sat in rooms for 15 years now where they said there's going to be no biz talk tomorrow. And um, as someone who makes their life and career out of biz talk server, you know, panicked and screamed and called my wife and said, my life is over. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to go back to C sharp. Um, I, I think every time we say that we're surprised and, and find that there's, there's a need there. Um, mm. I think eventually we'll find there's a natural progression that something will be better. Um, logic apps just opens up so many more scenarios compared to traditional biz talk. And as data centers and clients move away, as clients move away from traditional data centers, it's just going to make sense. So I think we're going to see biz talk around. I'm pretty sure 15 years from now, um, I'm going to get calls to come into biz talk 2020 development. Um, but there's going to be a lot of clients most that have moved on to a logic apps or wherever mm -hmm. logic apps takes us down the road. Yes. It's so a question from an anonymous user. I use web HTTP to create callable endpoints in IIS. Can those be moved to API management? Um, I, if they're local, I believe there's ways to expose them via uh, API management. Um, go ahead and uh, shoot me an email on that if you'd like. I'm not a huge expert on, I, I've exposed Azure-based endpoints uh, via API management. Um, I think there's ways, uh, there used to be a way with... Um, Release? Yeah, there used to be a way to do that. So uh, shoot me an email, I can do some research on that one. Yeah. A service bus relay might be a solution here, isn't it, Stephen? Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, the, the, there was a relay. There was, there was a way to do it to expose your, your uh, endpoints. Yeah, so those adapters in phase two, are they natively available in Bistock 2020? Yep, Great right when you install Bistock 2020, you get all four of those adapters. Um, the event hub came around with in the last release of Bistock in one of the cumulative updates or something. Um, but right now, all four of those are just out of the box. So it makes it nice. Yeah, Manish again, how do we go about flat file processing via Logic App? Um, so, so I've done that before. Um, it, it's a little more complex than I could, um, could outline here in a few minutes. Uh, go ahead and shoot me an email on that. That was mm. my very first uh, Logic App um, project that I worked on was flat file processing. So um, long and short of it, it's very similar experience. Flat file schema is exactly the same. Um, you can use BizTalk, build them out. Um, mm and you're there, so. Andreas asks, does Microsoft ever gonna support setting a proper content type on messages sent to a service bus queue? <laughs> That's a good, <laughs> <laughs> don't know, a great question for, uh, I think there's a service bus session coming up shortly. Yes. <laughs> uh, great, a great question for that. I, I uh, get very annoyed having to convert all over the place. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Vivek asks. Such is life, job security, right? <laughs> What is the performance impact of turning on analytics in the stock server and sending logs to app and sites logs? My research so far mm. shows that the CPU impact is not much, but the growth of tracking data and tracking transaction log need to be accounted for. That's a great question and not something I've ever looked into. Um, so shoot me an email on that one and I'll see what I can find. I'm pretty sure Sandro has a blog post on mm. it. Um, but yeah, I've not looked into that. Uh, most of my most of my clients using BizTalk 2020 today are still leveraging, um, aren't leveraging those features. That feature. So. Mm. Okay. Uh, in earlier demos of Service Bus, we saw the pattern of peak locking a message and then completing it after processing is done successfully, or else not removing it from the queue or adding it to a dead letter queue. Is this possible with BizTalk also? And if so, how? It's from Honor. Hmm. I've done that in logic apps, just like you mentioned. I have not done it in BizTalk. So there, BizTalk has a similar concept of it will acquire the lock 
and I believe that it won't that it will essentially destroy the message in the queue once it's successfully published to the BizTalk message box, uh, very similar to the way it would approach anything else. Um, there is a internal retry mechanism, which I think is 10. So if there's an internal problem processing the message from the queue, uh, BizTalk will dead letter it itself. So you will find that message. So like, for example, I, I've not tried it with no subscribers found. I, I messed up a property schema on the receive location. So it was mm -hmm. dead lettering all my messages. Um, so it had a retry time of a retry interval of 10 and then it dead lettered it. So there's, there's a similar concept, but not where you can uh, like a logic app, grab it and actually process it and, and control it yourself. It's all managed by the adapter. Great question. That's great. And to manage these dead letter queues, serverless 360 has out of box capabilities. We can explore further in our COI launch area. Yes. And connect with us. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, meanwhile, Manish's uh, question has been responded by Martin. Uh, just ah. upload a flat file schema to an integration account and use the flat file connector. This, yep. uh, Good. Yeah. Yes. So is SB adapter by default destructive read? It's from Ronnie. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I believe that's that's what it is. Once it's published to the message box, mm. it, it will be, it will go away. Yes. And Michael Stevenson has responded to Manish's message on BizTalk. SQL Windows current versions are covered by extended support until 2029. Plenty of time for Microsoft to decide if they need to do future <laughs> version, depending <laughs> on the pace of customers migrating to Logic Cap standard for those exactly. workloads <laughs> which are blocking for migration. That's wonderful. Himanshu has raised a question. Can a logic mm -hmm. app receive data from SFTP directly? The external system I'm integrating cannot send data to Blob. Is it possible to exclude BizTalk and directly get the data to logic app? Yeah, so a logic app can pull an SFTP location for, for new messages. Um, so that would be a polling based type of, of, of trigger. It can't, um, if they need to send via SFTP to you, you'd have to, uh, you'd have to expose something via the SFTP endpoints. Um, there's a, there's a demo on how to expose a blob storage account via mm -hmm. SFTP. Uh, but you can have biz or your logic app go out and get it for you. So you can set up your trigger to, you know, run every 30 seconds or whatever and look for new messages and then pull those in. It goes out and it queries and it gets a list, you know, according to your uh, file mask and then you can process those messages off that list. So, so, this, so to answer your question, logic apps can go get it. If they have to send it to you, you'll have to come up with another solution. Hmm. Is there a migration tool that helps migrate existing BizTalk apps to logic apps? Yeah, so we talked about it yesterday a little bit. There's a whole session on it tomorrow. Um, hmm. There is an amazing um, uh, migrator tool. Uh, I've not used it myself, um, but it looks pretty extensive. Um, so uh, it's, it's out there for sure. Um, it's kind of one of those things where I figure it's probably going to get you 80, 90% of the way. You got to do the rest. Um, but, but it, it does exist. Um, and they went through it yesterday in pretty, pretty good detail, um, of some of the pluses and minuses of it. So, um, I, I stay tuned to, for tomorrow's session. That's just focused on that. Yeah. Lazel asks, what about calling functions from maps? Um, I've not tried that. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not sure I, it, it's like the same concept of calling a database from a map. I just, I never liked it. Um, I guess there's no reason you couldn't ha call a custom DLL that they called a function, uh, and, re and return that data. Um, I mean, you have to do it. You have to do it. I, I, I guess I would try to find a different or better approach. Um, uh, it depends on kind of why you're calling the function. True. Yeah, Wagner informs you, Stephen, added the link for integration toolkit in the chat. Thanks, Wagner. Oh, perfect. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The integration toolkit, that's what it's called. That's wonderful. So, and cool. Nitin asks, how does MuleSoft compare to offering of Azure? Oh, uh, that's a great question. Um, I've not paid any attention to what MuleSoft has done uh, pretty much mm -hmm. since, uh, since Kent Ware left them uh, back in the day. Um, uh, it's been that long since I've since I've ran in to talk about MuleSoft. Uh, again, I'm pretty much Microsoft centric. Um, <laughs> when I get called in, clients have made the decision to go the Microsoft route. Mm. Um, when, when I did Big Five Consulting, we did a lot of competitive stuff, um, but that was pre MuleSoft. So, so I, I haven't paid attention. So, short answer is that I, I can't I can't comment on that one. 
Yeah. A question from an anonymous user inspired by your demo. What Wi-Fi button did you use for your home automation? Oh, yeah. So it was called Flick, F-L-I-C. And they're a Swedish company. And you buy the, the buttons, you needed to buy a Wi-Fi hub to make it Wi-Fiable. Uh, and the whole package was like a hundred bucks, came with like eight buttons or six buttons or something. Um, they have their own app that can actually do 50 different things on their app natively. So I wouldn't have needed a logic app to do that. Um, of course, that kind of takes all the fun out of it. You can't build a logic app. Um, so I went the logic app route and built it all custom so I could totally customize my workflow. Um, but I've been really happy with them. Um, if you want to talk more about them, shoot me an email. Yeah. Uh, I hope this is the last question in the list. McKayji asks, still many clients depend on email attachments. What is the replacement for POP3 BizTalk adapter when Microsoft Office 365 Outlook email adapter work only with MS Exchange Online? Um, so I know through Logic Apps, you're able to handle email attachments without a problem. Um, I've been able to, to do that. I've not looked at handling email attachments locally in the BizTalk environment. Um, though I, I, fortunately, I don't have anything to say about that. Other than worst case, you know, you could use the leverage logic apps and send that data down via a queue. Yes, that's wonderful, Stephen. I appreciate your patience and responding to all the questions that we gathered. And that was indeed yeah. an excellent interactive session right from the beginning till the end. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, anybody shoot me an email if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you guys later. Covey.com.